are. Another episode of Lucky Time Explosion. Wow. With one of my favorite artists. Thank you very much. On planet Earth, that is. Ooh. Yes. Ken ooh, Butler. Ooh, who is it that? It is I. Nice. It is Ken Butler. He's here. Nice. Thank yep. you for joining us, Ken. Yeah. My yeah. pleasure. I'm excited. So I've known Ken for a few years now, and um, he is an epic artist visually, sound-wise, even extraterrestrial ways. <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing. So we're really happy to have him here. And uh, we're going to be talking about music. We're going to be talking about video. We're going to be talking about... Aliens? Aliens, quite possibly. Well, and I mermaids. do have web feet. That's, I don't know. I'm do not you really? Sure. I'm not going to show those. In the... Oh, yeah. You need, to, you need to get people to pay for that. There's right. no images, yeah. right? This is just audio only, right? We're uh, not, we're no, we're, I've got a camera on us here. Right. <laughs> well, you, oh, my you, gosh. I see a camera. You've yeah. heard of OnlyFans, right? Only fans, yes. Right. So a lot of stuff on there is spicy, but I think that there's a huge audience for people who want to see web feet. Well, I see. Well, also, only fans is the way I keep myself cool in. Because uh, ah. yeah, you got no AC, you're raw that, dogging it I'm out a, here. Yeah, that's right. I'm a, I'm a, mm. I'm a, I'm yeah. a, I'm and a you're badass. In, you're in Williamsburg. I'm in. Well, I'm tech, It's interesting on the because border. I'm I'm on Manhattan Avenue, which is right on the border of Williamsburg and Greenpoint. So technically, it's Greenpoint, but. Well, it, it was hipper to say Williamsburg for a while. Maybe now it's hipper to say Greenpoint. Uh, you know, because oh, Williamsburg is the is the is the the cult of gentrification has yeah has taken right. over. So. It's more expensive than Lower East Side now. I know. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's insane. Oh, it's, my favorite thing about neighborhoods is that these realtors keep changing the names and like creating new little neighborhoods yeah. to like sell East it. Williamsburg. Eastwick. Oh, I know. Have you heard that? Mm. Sure. Bush or Bush uh, something else. Oh, like, God. Oh, yeah, it's bad. Bushburg, it's, Eastwick, who knows? No, You've it. been in the same apartment for how long since? I, be, I moved into my loft. Well, I moved to Williamsburg, uh, technically Williamsburg, on Wythe Avenue in 1988. To, mm. And I was in one a, a place there uh, with, a, with a view of the Twin Towers out the window. And a, 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 the, the, I moved it from, drove from Portland, Oregon, 3,000 miles. And the next morning, I woke up and looked, and there was a f f uh, smoke and flames. And there was a car burning right outside my window. So I was there from 88 to 94. And then in, in 94, I moved into my loft, uh, which is right between Williamsburg and, and Greenpoint. But I, yeah, 30 years. Yeah, when you get a good years. spot in New York City, you don't let it go. Well, it's yeah. a miracle that I'm still there. And I did just sign, drum roll, a, 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 thank you very yeah. much, <laughs> a 10-year a, a, a lease. Woo, that's uh, right. A, a, Commercial, the, baby. The rent, I'm not going to tell anyone because yeah. you would strike me. <laughs> but, but it is a miraculous situation. And uh, I, have, uh, I have the lease, so I'm not paying the entire amount. But it's a... It's 3,000 square feet, the whole place, right. so it's a miracle. And, and what I, are you doing in there? Well, Why do you need that much space, Ken? Well, you know, <laughs> I basically, there's a, an indoor pool, heated indoor pool. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. that's excellent. Uh, and then I, you know, I have an area with live palm trees, mm. and Vicky and Melinda are sort of, uh, with a, you know, we have uh, fans made out of feathers from exotic birds who are just basically there, and then... It was a refrigerated dining area, and right as they know, fan you, you strike them it, it, and pluck it, it, the leaves. Yeah, it's it's, uh, well, it is it is uh, it, it's interesting because when I was first there, I, I stashed the the bed in the corner, and mm. everything else was you know had a had a door as my desk, and I and I had everything else was studio space, and I was making stuff like crazy. You Us did the door desk, you know. That's the that's the Jeffy Bezos, as I call him, or Jeff Bezos of Amazon, famous right. for making a desk out of his door. Right. Well, that's that's a classic with uh, two 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 uh, file cabinets and a door. As, yes. As, you know, I mean, I never really outgrew the college vibe. I still have about <laughs> thirty milk crates. And, nice. You know, and uh, but anyway, the uh, the the space uh, is is now is it's is is much you know, much much less studio and a little bit more living. If you call it living. Right. <laughs> and I've been there. I've visited there. Yeah. And, and like, I'd rather go there than Disney World. Well, it, it, it is <laughs> serious. It, it does Tell me have, about it. Well, it does have some exciting things. And I, relatively speaking, I'm a bit obsessive compulsive about, uh, I, I, you know, I had fantasies of, of being an interior. I once said to an interior designer, I said, I'm really into interior decorating. He went, 
It's <sighs> interior design, not <laughs> decorating. Uh-oh. And I'm like, oh, so I've learned that lesson. But it's true that I'm, I had fantasies of doing that. So it's a little kind of obsessed, but there's a lot of stuff. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, I'd say 90% of it is uh, from the streets. Not, not yeah. only the artwork, but also I have my, my dining table. Oh, I is, love is, a good is, dumpster dive. Is actually a, uh, a grand piano that, some, that, that what I found on the street that somebody had pushed out of a building uh, in, in Williamsburg. They, hey, what, what are we going to do with the piano? You know, <laughs> and it's, it's, it, they called somebody and it's, you know, we can move that piano for $800. Right. So they, let's, I'll see you at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, if you don't want anything <laughs> anymore and you don't want to pay to move it, just put it out on the street yeah. generally. Yeah. It will get picked up. And, I did and a lot so of that. It's, actually, it's, it's actually, that also occurred to me that it was a, 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 a survival tactic. Yeah. If your artwork can all be made from found things, not only is that it exp- inexpensive, but also somebody else has to do all the hard labor. Mm. They're I'm, the ones that made the chair out of the wood and right. put the finish on and waited overnight for it to dry and put another coat of the lacquer. Right. And then just to just, let everyone know, yeah, if, if you don't know what Ken Butler does, he uh, turns found objects into playable instruments. Ah, But it's not quite that, that right? simple. Yeah, you, what do you think? Is that an accurate well, description? Well, it's, it's interesting because the, the, the playable, this is always what everyone's, my main thing is, is assemblage and the, the principal thing mm. are these musical instruments that I make from found objects. But it's not necessarily focused on, on function. The function is, as I say, an, a kind of an accidental byproduct of some relationship that the objects I choose have to the body of a string instrument. Oh, I see. So that's, yeah. So like what is, what looks like a violin body? Not like mm. a violin, but what looks like a telephone kind of is violin size. There are other, you know, a bicycle seat is kind of violin like. So then, so it's, it's more of a poetic a thing, and then I try to make it r- as relatively functional as possible, but not acoustically. So I put contact mics on them, and then so I'm looking for objects that are that that bear some relationship to, you know, violins, violas, cellos, saws, oud, uh, a stand-up bass, banjos, uh, all kinds of international so so whatever, and then I will try to make it functional. So. Uh, and then people say, well, is that playable? And then, of course, here's my smart-ass answer yeah. to that, which What's is, that? <laughs> can you name any object at all of any size or shape that's not playable? Of yeah. course, everything's play. So what they really perhaps mean to more specifically say, is that instrument designed to be performed on? Is it good? And, and, the, <laughs> and the answer to that is no, not ah, necessarily. But you do it anyway. Well, I... Tr- if forced, there's if forced. Of, of I've made about 500 of wow. them. Wow. And so there's probably only about 30 or 40 that are really that I would that I would perform on. And actually now when I perform there's there's a dozen. Mm. So, so Can I ask what instrument you started with? I with uh, I learned uh, initially in 7th grade I uh, played the viola. Most yeah, people, uh, viola game. Yeah, yeah, viola is weird because it, it, most people, who, you know, there's 27 people on violin, and then the, yeah. the the instructor looks and who's got the biggest hands? You get uh, the viola, but not in my case. I said to my mom, "I want it." I tugged on her dress. I mom, I like that fat violin. Yeah. So go figure. There you go. I started and, playing trombone because of Star Trek. Oh, and I saw Will Riker, you know, playing trombone, and then they passed out the fifth grade band. And I like, didn't have a choice. They gave didn't me the, choice? they gave me clarinet, alto oh, clarinet, which nice. I didn't respect at the time. You know, oh, that's... I really wanted a snare drum. Yeah. I wanted that, but that was like the ah. most, ex- you know, very expensive. Right. Um, and I remember I didn't want to do it anymore. Uh, his name was Mr. Sherman, and I remember bringing back the instrument, and I'm like. I just don't want to. I don't want to play this anymore. And he looks so disgusted and displeased. <laughs> he didn't. I don't even think he said anything. I think he just gave me a very dirty look. He's just like, and hey, he shook get his out head. Of my classroom. And he probably in his head he was like, "You lose, sir." <laughs> yeah. I disappointed a music teacher too because I didn't. I came back to school and they they were like, "You play trombone? 
we need a trombone. And I was like, I'm like into playing bass guitar now. And they're like, no, we have four <laughs> bass guitars. No. And I was like, all right, but I'm not going well, to school then. Well, we used to have in college, there was something that we, yeah, we're, we're having a little jam session, or we called it the the 1,000 guitar player party, <laughs> where there's 480 <laughs> yeah. people with Let guitars. Just, dude, one guy God. with a bongo drum. Yes. Thank God that the song uh, Wonderwall didn't exist in your time. Yes. Because no. it would have been a mess. That was my fifth grade band. They let everyone choose. So there was 50 trumpets and like 50 drummers, two flautists, and two uh, trombonists, right, right. and that was it. Where did you study in school? Well, you said going to college. What, well, in college, what do you have your degree in? I have a degree in studio art. Wow. So, so it was always, it was always uh, that from day one, that was music. I always did music. I, I took six months of jazz piano lessons. My mom was an incredible piano player, mm. and, and so she played in a dance band in high school called Satan and the Seven Devils. And she was that Satan. That is bad ass. I know. And her father, her father, when she was 17, this is from Moscow, Idaho, took her to New York to see Fats Waller. And she, mm. so she could play boogie woogie and she could sight read anything Bill Evans. But anyway, so there was, so I was always playing music. I had a, uh, I had a, a, a little, a, a, a piano was around. And then I, I was playing viola, and then I, I picked up the guitar. But in, in school, that was sort of the, that was my hobby while I was serious about the visual arts. So I, I got a master's degree in painting, wow. of, all, of all things, and then uh, yeah, fantasies of architecture a little bit, but, but, but it was painting, but I never liked paint. So that was, ah. that, so that's, that's, and then of course people said, well, Ken, you can't be an artist and musician. You better, you better pick you one, better pick one because you, you know, and so I was arrogant enough to think, well, what could I do that would be, uh, so I could do both. You and fixed I thought, it. Yeah. You fixed your problem. Yeah. Well, well, the most genius thing, if there was something was to make my own instruments, because when you're playing a broom or a shovel or a hockey stick or a, an umbrella or a broom or whatever, people's expectations are low. You know, <laughs> that guy's unbelievable. He can almost play that. <laughs> As opposed to New York City, if you got a violin. No you, to you, self, <laughs> lower audience expectations. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let me so ask I you, was thinking. I'm sure this is a very difficult uh, question to answer, but I guess within a top 10, because you've made so many different instruments, what is one of your favorite found objects that you know well, well, yeah. turned well, into Well, there's there's an there's 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 actually there's probably th th if I like a, for for example if I was on some kind of serious international showcase and I had five minutes, mm. uh, it would probably be either the snow sh small snow shovel, that, which is a, a, a if actually a child's snow shovel I believe which has a metal blade. And it just has three strings, but it has a beautiful, beautiful sound amplified with a contact microphone. And uh, it, it tuned uh, DAD, so it's an open tuning, and it, I, 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 it's fretless. And Drop I kinda, D, shovel? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Sweet. <laughs> but That's I, metal as hell. I use my, uh, it's like a, it, it has a metal, of course, the, the handle of the shovel, it's all metal. And so it's a little bit like a, 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 a sarod, which is an Indian instrument with a shiny metal Mm. Uh, that, that you play with your fingernail, so I can get a lot of. It has a very Indian, Twang. and then the, the with the contact microphone, the the you can percuss on the blade of the shovel, and so it's. Or the other one would be an. Uh, uh, what I I don't have fancy names for the. I, I don't like. You don't the, like name them weird and pretentious like, I names. Hate, I, I'm a, not a fan. What's that <laughs> called? I made this thing out of, a, and it's called the Gakaluka Uka Muka Duka phone. Oh please. So I, I know, just, cool I just call my guitar Barbara. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I, what I call, well, for one thing, there's so many that I, I would lose track. If, yeah, uh, if there so, are pieces, you should so, name them things like Ascension of yeah, Heaven. Yeah, right, right. You right, know, right. Indistinguishable <laughs> Fire. Zone Quest. <laughs> right. Zone Quest. Hell but, yeah. But, and so the other one is, a, is the, well, that's the shovel. And then the cane racket, which is an aluminum cane attached to an aluminum tennis racket so it's got two necks one of the the cane has a single c uh c st a, a guitar string tuned in c and then the tennis racket has two strings with tuned in a in a high second a, 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 a c and a and a high second so it's got a nice little harmonic thing and then the tennis racket has because of the nature of the contact microphones 
the whole body becomes uh, alive, and so there's like also some little imbira thumb piano kind of thing. Oh so yeah, I could yeah. Create a lot of. I other remember you textures. played that instrument at the show that I curated Correct. in Williamsburg, yeah. and you played that, and that was yeah. some show. It's a that well, was well, some th show. Thank you very much. Thank well, you. Well, yeah. So, Where's that money you owe me from? I'm just oh, kidding. Shit. I'm just kidding. Uh, Brandon, Wait. I gotta go. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm getting money, a call. Money. See you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. That's so funny. You know, I heard you said earlier when we were chatting before we set up for the recording that uh, you don't really do recording yourself. You're not well, really into I mean, it too much. I did. Uh, uh, lucky, uh, I was very, very fortunate that uh, D uh, John Zorn signed me to his mm. Zodic label wow. in 1997 on the, of, of, on the steps of Tower Records. Hell yeah. I was coming, remember record stores? Yeah, I had a friend who was an artist at Tower Records. Like yeah. that was their job was just to do the store art. And they yeah. had like the biggest office in there. Yeah, so he, well. he was, I was coming down the stairs and he was coming up the stairs. I knew him just a little tiny bit. And he said, uh, Ken, do you have any recordings? So I go, well, you know, it's not really my thing. I would probably want to do a video because it's so visual and I don't really, plus it's the world's longest line to get into. I want to make a record. Right. So he said, oh, I'm going to sign you to Zodic and we'll do a booklet. So that was a miracle. That's but amazing. John Zorn's huge deal. I, I, I know. I know. Uh, John Zorn. Yeah. Come on. So, uh, but because of the visual nature of like, you know, like the idea, if you're listening to my music, you know, what's that kind of out of tune, scratchy, what is it, a viola? Well, right. No, it's an umbrella. So I think it's important to see. To see it. And also then the idea of that fussy, knob twisting, repetitive, oh, yeah. let's redo it and the, the filter this and that. I just, I am not a knob <laughs> twister. But you know, so, it's funny though, because I think the longest line, uh, besides getting in to make a record, is to sell a painting. Well, well, I, well, okay, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> that's not even a line. That's a, 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 that's a series of people lying that's down. That's a brutal stampede. <laughs> it's, it's, no, they're lying down because they've been waiting so long. Yeah. It's so, just a, it's a, gra it's a graveyard, well, well, actually. Okay, here's one. The, the, the young man who lives in my loft with me, Royal Jarman, yo, Royal, is making a living selling his paintings. Yay! It can be done. <laughs> it can be done. It can be done. Although he owes me seven thousand dollars. <laughs> no, you better a sell a few more. more. <laughs> Just two more, then. That's not true. That's two. But more. anyway, I yeah. So I I really consider myself to be a live performer, and mm. you know, and, and and that's really as far as the music goes, and 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 that's and then or video because I think it's I, I'm interested in that multidisciplinary kind of thing to see what I'm doing. And I, did, I used to do a lot of multimedia things with uh, projections behind me. Speaking of projections behind you, do you have any weird video you want to send me after we're done? I'll put it up here as our background for today. Sure. He has I years could, worth sure. of video. I oh, I have video schmidio. Yeah, video yeah, schmidio? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in fact, I, I just recently uh, completed a, uh, a, 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 an experimental video that, called Axiomatics, Ooh. where I took some... It's a little complicated... In 1991, I had an exhibition at Test Site Gallery. Thank you, Annie Heron, who's unfortunately no longer with us. But uh, and uh, I, I approached. Uh, I, I had some contacts with MTV at the time, and I had an idea to make a melody, each note of which was played on a different instrument. Because oh, cool. uh, most people wouldn't think to do that. Because the but, but in my case, I had, you know, no, multiple violins, multiple cellos. Sounds multiple like a big guitar. undertaking. Yeah, well, well, not really. One note per instrument. So yeah. my friend Carlton Bright uh, recorded me a, a, with a black background, wearing a black shirt, and I played this melody. One note on a violin made out of a shoe, next note, uh, different. And then we put that together into a melody. And I recently took that footage, which was shot with high eight camera mm -hmm. back in uh, 1991, nice. 92, and and you know with because the editing capacity now is so much higher with uh, so there's my my buddy Sam Shield, Sammy, hey. and I put that together and combined those all together. So there's some shots with 30, 30 layers of me, all multi nice. video. So Nice. Oops. Oh, you're all both, well, with video and audio. Layers. Video and audio. Right. Yeah. So, right. And then, of course, the interesting thing about about that is when you when you speed up the video, the the, the mm -hmm. sound, the pitch goes up. Yeah. 
And of course, the thing about violins, it's interesting, is that when you when you bow faster, like if you're if you speed up a video of somebody walking, it looks yeah. awkward. Speed up somebody playing violin, looks it better. just looks like they're <laughs> just playing faster. Yeah, but I anyway, play a little bit. I play violin. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, there's this that video is actually, but yeah, I'm essentially uh, think of myself as performance uh, as as a as a live performer is right. where it really goes. And, well, but, the reason I asked though is because I'm dying for a Ken Butler sample pack. Well, uh, you're making uh, it. Well, have you made it? I don't even know what that is. It's like a. <laughs> it's when you take like all your instruments that you've made and record them making like a C note uh, oh. or whatever basic note they can, and maybe a couple extra different pitches, you know, for fits someone to work. through the range, and then you give them that basic sample. And you sell it as like an asset so that Wait. people can buy it and then use that in their music and like, you know, pitch shift it. And because nowadays you can just take like one note and basically put it into a sampler and oh. make a whole song. With Sorry, it. I'm unfamiliar with the term sell. Sell. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's when you take stuff for uh, and you give it to people and then they give you money back. Oh, I thought we were made of cells. You we, mean, oh, that's oh, a different oh, cell. That's a different wow. cell. <laughs> that well, is the cell that uh, money puts our oh, minds in. Right? That's the soft that's a cell. Different cell. I see. Yes, yes. Soft cell. Anyway, good band. Well, well that, that's essentially what I, the thing is. I would so the, the idea of thinking in my case when I think about a single note, I see it as me playing. In fact, yeah. my fantasy, technologically speaking, if anyone out there wants to fund this project. <coughs> the idea I, I have is to have a, a high-tech keyboard, MIDI interface or something, which, and I would record, I would record myself playing each instrument, mm. let's say violin made out of a, a bicycle seat, and I would, with a contact mic, and I would record single bow strokes of every note all the way up to the top. Yeah, sample and, pack. Sample pack. And Ooh. then I would do that with 30 instruments, including cellos and bow. And then I would have someone put that into a computer and be able to play so a So you were doing keyboard. sample packs before you knew what, what sample what, packs were. Bingo. <laughs> but the Shit. idea that you could then play a 10-note chord and right. see on the screen this hydra of yeah. me playing all the... So when I think of a single note, I think of it in visual terms as well. Well, well that's my that's my real thing. The power of witnessing the source of the sound being made. Let me repeat that. The power of seeing the source of the sound being produced, which we have lost in mm. this world. It's a some kind of mysterious knob twist music for 60, 80, maybe 100,000 years was, you know, Joe was playing his Joephone over at Joe's cave. I am there. <laughs> now you go into a bathroom and just do, 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 do. It's, it's, recorded music is only 100 years old. Well, a, a big part of your performance, too, is the pedals. Well, yeah, well, sure. I'm using some technology. I'm, I'm using some looping, right. some pitch shifting, uh, a, a little, little harmonizing, but but not overly using right. using. You're not but, sitting on Suno like yeah. me and Morgan like to do, just for chits and giggles. I don't yeah, even know what that that's is. That's AI so, thing. It's oh, it's, it's basically all you do is this: you can write your own lyrics, and you can give it three descriptions of what you want the song to sound like, and before you know it, it's generated. And uh, you know, I'm a musician, and my yeah. friends are musicians, and uh, I don't use it to make serious stuff. I mess around and do silly things, but. My two friends, uh, Dave and uh, Al, I showed them and um, I explained to them what I was showing them and, um, you know, they're listening and the music's funny, but they're not laughing. Yeah. And at the end of the song, they're like, this is not good. Yeah. <laughs> this is, like, not I'm as in like the quality, but happy. like, this is bad. Like, I don't show me this anymore. I don't. <laughs> if you're going to show me music, I don't want to listen to this shit. Yeah. No it's, offense. It's a computer smashing it up. A little, you know, lots of but, recorded music. Doing right. the same thing to music that AI has been doing to art. Uh, and that people are afraid of the similar thing, which is just like, why right. would anybody pay an artist or a musician anymore? Uh, if you can just go and click and do this. Right. We'll see. But, but AI, AI is not going to affect 
me no. live it, on stage no, playing absolutely not. a broom. Not at all. I mean, I suppose you could you could ask. I mean, you know who Peter Valick, the vape? You know who that guy? The that guy is? No, Peter Valick. Oh, you need to, ch- no. you need to tell our listeners who it is. I mean, out. I, I mean, yeah, he, I know. Tell our listeners. No he, I'm kidding. Yeah, tell us who he is. Uh, he goes by the vape, and he's the on vape. on Instagram, and and he does a lot of AI video. Mm. Of it, and also audio, and he also makes mechanical. He's the king of noise, and it's not. Nice. It's, it's, it's aesthetic is not, but, but he's done some crazy AI sort of stuff. With weird instruments, yeah, so morphing. Kind of, like yeah. that's how I think it's cool. I think that yeah. stuff's cool. Like it can when it be. when you break it a little bit and you make it do weird it, shit it that doesn't be. look like something yeah. you've seen. But anyway, I because I because there's just nothing. That, I mean. Uh, there's nothing can compete with live, and I don't think live is in danger of being AI'd out of the. It might actually help it, right? Because people well, are eventually going to get sick of it. They're going to get burnout. And they're going to well, crave that. I mean, we'll see. That. It's an interesting time, but uh, I suspect if you know, I, w- I always think of the relationship uh, what photography did in the turn of the century, yes. late 1800s, how changed it, painting what, tremendously. It, it, it pushed it into incredible creativity by. Yep. by Have you ever putting, seen a show that made you cry? A music show. You, you just started tearing show. up. Oh, absolutely! Oh, vocalists. Vocalists. Uh, uh, um, uh, the, uh, Yasmin Levy, a, a an Israeli vocalist uh, at uh, Carnegie Hall. I was in the third row, and uh, the the she's a Ladino singer, which is a mixture of Middle Eastern and flamenco influences, and wow. she's got just black hair and red. I think I, the, I think I know who you're talking the about. Ney may, the Ney, which is an open-ended Middle Eastern flute, he comes out, sits down, plays a beautiful little intro, and she walked out and with this red dress and this long curly black hair, came to the microphone and opened her mouth, and I just started bawling wow. like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's a... It's funny because evolve. It's 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 interesting. You know, sort of an instrument guy, you know, with a million guitars and a million weird, crazy. But it's vocalists that that really gets you. I, yeah. I I cried. I cried once. It was uh, Punch Brothers. Punch Brothers. It's really huh. cheesy. You That's know, right. you, you've heard of them. Uh, I've Chris heard Stile of is uh, look an amazing uh, youth player. Uh, but it's all strings. It's you know, a violinist, yeah, a banjo yeah. player, an acoustic guitar. Yeah. Um, they they play very epic music, and I saw them live once, and I just like I'm like, Ugh. Ugh, got you. That's the best though. I'll admit that I I cry at anything that moves me. Anything that's good, I cry yeah, all the time. I, I, I do too. I me cry too. like the, I the video game music if it's good. I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. I just uh, I I've seen this movie a million times. It's so good though. Carlito's way. Oh, Such a, without Pacino memory. and very vague young memory. John Languizamo, but um, the, well, the it begins where it ends, and if you've seen the movie before, it's it's kind of like a gangster movie. It's really a love story, and I I cry, I cry at the end of that movie. I cry in the beginning. Like tell me, anybody has have you ever seen that movie? Of not course, cried? people think Carlitos way. That's a, God, that's a popular movie. What a great movie. I swear, maybe it's just because I worked in a movie theater and I had a couple of friends there who were obsessed with it. But before we run out of time on the free version of our podcast, I want to say, hey, we're going to be chatting with Ken a little bit longer. Check out our Patreon. Speaking of selling, this is what we have to do now. Give us three bucks. Come on. Give us three bucks hey. a month. Hey, come on. Check it out. We have a lot of uh, extended episodes that are a full hour long. And before we go, I wanted to see, Ken, if you were, uh, have anything to plug. Do you have any shows coming up or anything? I do. I nice. do. Uh, I do. Uh, uh, currently, um, I have an exhibition uh, uh it's a three-person ex. Here, I want to see. Let me get the <laughs> get the info out. Oh, we got a flyer. Nice. To, the, 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 it's not in the area, but it's it's in in Hudson, New York, two and a half hours. Oh, I love north. Hudson up there. Hudson uh, at the Front Room Gallery. I have mm. a nine of my instruments, uh, a couple basses, a, a cello, a, some couple violins, and a few guitars. In a, in a show called Symbolic Convergence. Mm. Right? Have you ever tried to turn a human body into a, a living uh, human body, into a playable uh, instrument? No, but there is a guy <laughs> named Knight Clay, Knight, Knight something, who did make a guitar out of his dead uncle's bones. Uh, oh, this is I good. Did, he's a metal guy. Yes. I did yes, see yes, that. Yes, uh, yes. I did see that. But but this is uh, with uh, with me Linda Gungian and Melissa Murray uh, uh, and that and I'm performing next Saturday. Nice. July twentieth at Front Room Gallery in Hudson at three p.m. Nice. We might have some listeners in Hudson, so yeah, if you're you out there, know. go over there. You never know. But Check it out. That's yeah. current. So obviously, we're about to get really good. We're going to talk about some uh, dead bones. 
art. Uh, so yeah, once again, please check us out on Patreon for the rest of this interview. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and we hope you'll join us next week. Bye. Toodles. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In this little case is a strip of dental dam. Uh, comes in a square. That's what that is? That's what that is. <laughs> I thought that's, it was a fruit roll-up. It's a lot that's, sexier. That's, that's, it's the, the, called a, the inventor, Stan Wood, W-O-O-D. Go to YouTube, Google Stan Wood. You'll see Stan uh, playing his invention, the Vibra Band, uh, who, who I learned it from. He's no longer with us, unfortunately, but he it's his invention. Uh, Amazing. And, and, and so, but uh, I, because he's gone and because I'm, uh, I like horrible puns, uh, I'm gonna, uh, my name for it is a little different. Um, it, it, it resembles the sound of a trumpet, most likely, you'll see. Hmm. But also, for the sake of this horrible, horrible pun, uh, it, it, it sounds like a soprano sax and resembles a condom. So you could call it a safe sax. Hey! Thank you very much. Nice, nice, mm. nice. Thank you. Thank you. Good. All so, right. Are we jamming or so, what? Okay. So we're, we're gonna, here we okay, go. I'll turn start. This down. I'm going to turn yours loud down a little bit so it doesn't blow out. And All right, you start, Morgan. John Zorn back on the phone. I yeah, think he might right? be interested I in this. Holy shit. He hung up on me.